Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot. Where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Welcome home, Brains. There's only one requirement to hang out on the edge, is that you open your big brain and close your small mind. Did you bring your thinking caps? It's time to put them on, because the conversation starts me that your sister and her entire family have contracted the coronavirus yes they were all covid sick wow and did everybody have different symptoms and signs or all of them kind of experienced the same thing they they did have a few similar symptoms like the cough and the 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 feeling of uh, the cold or the flu um and my sister her her breathing started to become um a, a bit she just couldn't breathe. She couldn't breathe. She couldn't walk across the room without having to catch her breath. So she suffered. Wow. And so the, how are they doing now? Well, my sister just got out of the hospital um, two days ago. And uh, the niece that brought it home, because I have a niece who's in her mid twenties, she continued to party. And that's how she ended up bringing it home to everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we are we're not happy with her, but now I think she might have learned some sort of a lesson. She's sick as well. She didn't get as she had the cold and the uh, the cough and the fever, but everything she could take care of at home. But my sister had to be hospitalized because she could not breathe. Wow. All. Yeah. Help us, Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's so much going on in the world, and one of them is the lack of manners like mine. <laughs> I dropped my postcard. Sometimes you can't help it. <laughs> I'll forever have it upside down brains. We're here with Misty Harris. And we Hi. are going to examine the lost art of etiquette and good manners. Because folks do not have good manners. They are rude. They are abrupt. They don't know how to act and conduct themselves in social settings. They're not respectful of people's time. They're not respectful of their conversation and the choice of words they use. They Mm. don't know how to, you know, a young man does not know how to open the door for a, or get up out of his seat on the bus and let somebody sit down. There's just basic things. And so Misty has a finishing school course online that she's teaching. She's also a former Montessori educator And I'm just so glad to have her here because again, style, grace, and etiquette and manners are a lost art. So welcome her here with me on the edge. Oh yes, that's where we are, okay. (laughs) And we're about to get it in and get it right. It's the holiday season and somebody might invite you over to their house virtually. (laughs) And you need to know how to act, right, Misty? That's right. You can't just barge in, you know. You can't just barge in. And, you know, you might want to send them a, a Harry and David's gift box <laughs> as a, a, a gift. So thank you so much for he- being here with me. Tell us a little bit about your history and where all this began for you. Oh, well, first, thank you for inviting me here. Um, my history, I have a long history. I'm way older than you think I am. But anyway. Uh, uh, good, girl. you doing it. <laughs> so, um. When I was younger, there were these things that everybody used to go to, and it was charm school. And if you didn't have charm school, you had the ladies at church, Mm -hmm. the ladies in the neighborhood that would teach you what to do, what was wrong and what was right. Um, So I enjoyed charm school, went to modeling school, um, got married before I was- Oh no, one second. Did you go to Barbizon? No, I I thought about that. Girl, (laughs) mama sent me to Barbizon, okay? Oh yeah. (laughs) Oh, yes, that was it, you know. You was, that and Girl Scouts. Yep. I fucked out of Girl Scouts, but I finished Partisan. <laughs> you know, every community had their own little charm school. Absolutely. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, continue. Oh, no, you're fine. Yeah, so I went to that, and um, I continued to kind of study the art. because My parents had very um, high-end jobs, you know, my dad worked for a major department store. My mom worked for the mayor. 
And so we have to present ourselves in a good light. You can't just be any Tom, Dick, or Harry. You need to look good and feel good about yourself. You can't show up looking ghetto and talking ghetto. That doesn't work. And so ghetto is not bad. Ghetto is not bad. Ghetto is, ghetto is one of my favorite communities and words. But there is a certain uh, etiquette or standards. I etiquette. There's certain standards that you must live by and how you conduct yourself. And when you're ghetto, you in a whole different lane. Mm -hmm. You can't do that at the mayor's house trying to eat dinner with your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> no, you see what the deal is with etiquette is when you learn the rules, you can tweak them. All right. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know them, there's no help for you. You're walking in ignorant to the facts. Um, so let's see for later on, then I, um, I ended up training to teach etiquette. Mm. Uh, I trained in Canada, I trained in England and I trained here in the U S and then I myself went to finishing school because I wanted to know what other people knew that I didn't think we would ever learn. And so for me, that was just like, wow, this is a whole nother, when you live in the Royal house, it's a whole nother country up there. Hmm. Um, and we'll never know unless we learn it. Right. You know, again, setting the table. First of all, people don't even sit at the table anymore. That was required. Me, my mother, my father, and my brother, <clears throat> until he got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> Ow, yeah, yeah, stuff happens. Uh, we used to sit at the table, and it was that was it. 6.30, 7 o'clock at the latest. We all sat there. We had a conversation about our day, you know, what was going on. If somebody was too quiet, we knew something was going on. But that was our way of bonding and connecting. Folks now got the TV trays, if they even have a TV tray sitting there on the couch, stuff in their face, no conversation, yet looking in the phone. Or, girl, you go to the restaurant. I told my daughter, you turn it off and put it in your purse. This is a time for us to bond, and I am paying big money for this. <laughs> there will be no texting and Facebooking and, and TikToking while we're trying to eat. It can wait. You really can't wait. So you also were an educator in mm -hmm. Montessori school. And when my daughter was young, I ended up putting her in parochial school, but I didn't, I didn't do Montessori. I looked into it. It was very expensive. Tell me a little bit about your time there and what is Montessori education? Well, before Montessori, I had actually trained to become a midwife. Um, and oh, midwifery? Yeah. <laughs> And, and only to find out later on, because I didn't know who my uh, biological, the, all of the extended family was, that my grandmother was a granny midwife. Didn't know it. Had no idea. Wow. Um, so after that, um, I, I had a child that became ill and I just couldn't, couldn't finish the studies. But um, I decided to do um, Montessori because I had this one child who was so smart. Anything I gave her she, she would do it, bingo, 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 bingo. And I was left going, what do I do with her? And so I started to study different types and styles of education. And that's how I got into Montessori. Um, so instead of uh, expensively putting her into school, I decided to get trained in it so I wouldn't have to pay for it. So <laughs> that was my thought. Well, you're, you're very smart because again, it's very individualized learning styles. Uh, I don't know what they call the schools now, but one of my girlfriends has her son in a special kind of learning environment where they teach him what he wants to learn mm -hmm. at his pace. Uh, sometimes it's group, sometimes it's individual, but and it's very pricey to go there again. But it is he's excelling in school because he's like a little brainiac. Yeah, and and that's what I like is that because in regular school everybody has to learn the same thing at the right. same time. And sometimes you test, have children. Test, 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 test. Yeah, the tests really stink. So sometimes you have children who, who learn a little bit slower or they like to repeat things. So the repeating of, of an activity actually, you know, cements it into their mind and they learn and that just stimulates more learning. So if they don't get a chance to do it again and again until their mind is satisfied, well, then they missed out on that lesson. There was no point. With Montessori, you know, it's individual trays, individual areas. You can do this today. You can do math tomorrow. You can do art today. And when you are satisfied, when your brain has stimulated enough on that activity, then you move to the next one. So it's mastery. 
And the teacher has a lot of flexibility and creativity too. You really kind of get into the psyche of the child. They don't feel this pressure to compete. Mm -hmm. I know I had a learning challenge in school. I could not hear some of the sounds of letters phonetically. And so the children would read much faster than me. Mm. And so what I would do is I turn the pages, two or three pages. I'm trying to catch up with them or exceed them. And comprehension went out the door because mm. I didn't know what was on those other two or three pages because I hadn't read them. Yeah. So, you know, really looking at your child and gauging their style, especially with this homeschooling girl. Mm -hmm. You know, these parents, are, they didn't do what you did, okay? They are not trying to go and get a degree uh, in education. They try, they try to get through the corona so they can send their kids back to school. <laughs> but they had no idea this little person that's living in their house. No. They really, no. really didn't. So let's move. Let me go back a little bit to midwifery. Did you deliver some babies? Did you have an opportunity to do that? I did not, but I was always, I was there for several births. Oh, wow. So when it was time for me to have like two of my children, I was telling them what to do. Mm. Because I, you know, it's time for this. It's time for that. I need this. Well, things have changed so much. I've had guests on my show that are now doing hypnobirthing and the underwater birthing and, you know, all kinds of different options to deliver a baby, I still say a little, epi not an epidural, a little Demerol and the hospital is fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> but I only had one, but then I think of my grandmother that had nine at the right. house, you know? <laughs> so there is a lot of value and midwives are so important. People don't understand what a midwife is versus a doula versus a physician. Can you kind of break down the difference between the three? All right. So your physician, they can uh, administer all the medications. They can do uh, C-section if need be, things like that. The midwife is there to assist you uh, for a natural birth. And if there are any complications and she needs to um, admit you to the hospital, she has to call a physician to do that. Now, a doula is just a birth assistant. She is your personal person. You need a drink of water. She's getting it. You need your back rub. She's there for that. She's there to comfort the mom. Nobody else but the mom. And that's the difference. Okay. All right. So everybody's got a place. Right. Everybody's got a place. Okay. So now let's talk about a place. A seat at the table. Let's okay. talk about some manners. I'm telling you, it is such a lost art. And I have so many questions. Let's start with the basics. Time management. You know... Uh, I, and I had to learn this and I had to learn it. And I learned it all about 10 years ago because someone called me rude because I was late. And I was like, well, you know, I didn't, maybe I didn't value their time the way that I should. Mm -hmm. And that was so disrespectful. And I took that with me, even though I closed the deal and all that, but just the fact that when you walked in, someone was looking at their watch and, you know, immediately said, oh, you're late. That's rude. I haven't been late since. I'm always five to 10 minutes early. Uh, my brother was in the music and entertainment industry and he was always on time. He learned that from Diana Ross, always oh. on time. And that is so respectful of other people's time. If you can't make it, if you are running late, if you need to cancel an appointment, you have a responsibility to communicate that to that person. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Because it's not just them. It, there could be other people involved and it could just domino into something that it shouldn't be. Um, one, another thing about time management is sometimes people are just disorganized. Right. Uh, and that being late to things constantly, uh, yeah, that's a problem. Well, you know, and women, for some reason, they think that it's cute uh, that they're late to an event. You know, your man is sitting there ready to go patting his foot, un un loosening his tie, and here you are trying to get dressed. You are supposed to be prepared. You know that you're supposed to be going somewhere. Your clothes, if you know it takes you a long time, you're supposed to have that laid out. Mm -hmm. You know, you're down to your lipstick, what you are going to wear. You're not supposed to be rustling, looking for that other shoe. Mm -mm. <laughs> or you know, All of those things. Because again, I saw um, a clip 
of our now to be former president number 45. Being invited, wait a minute, girl, being invited to the palace to have dinner with the queen. He was and, not ready. And him and, and Mrs. 45 was late. Mm -mm. You were not late for the queen of no. England? How no. embarrassing was that? Girl, they talked about him like a dog. <laughs> there was awful sauce. What is that like? I mean, you've been at the royal palace, you know, you really have to be prim and proper and curtsy and all that. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, let's see. Being late is terrible. I think for him, that was a power trip. But you know what? He's himself. Um, you need to have it together. The, the English, everything is in its place and it's in order. No question about that. Um, no extra mess. No extra. It's straight up done and perfect. So you, you really do want to be prepared for anything and everything, and less is more. Um, you don't want to wear super flouncy things. You don't want to outshine the people you're with or the people you're visiting because, you know, it's their time. Mm. But um, yeah, definitely it's a whole other set of rules and we just need to learn. We don't have to live by all of those rules because we don't have all of that. Right. right. But we can integrate those things to make our lives better and more orderly. Right. And like you said, less is more. It's like Absolutely. it's like jewelry. Girl, you see some people that just got on, you know, all this jewelry, bracelets all up around their neck and all. Less is more, you know? Mm -hmm. So what you do is instead of adding something, you might want to take something away. For sure. Absolutely. Your your colors uh, should be in line with, you know, the environment that you're in. You know, you probably wouldn't want to wear a hot pink suit to uh you with know a feather boa right right, 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 right. and a hat you know you probably wouldn't want to do that in certain situations you want to look at it and maybe do a little research absolutely if, if you're going to go to a particular party or whatever go back and look at other pictures go and google you know what these other people wore or have some sense of style and etiquette again you don't want to stand out and end up looking like a clown and be embarrassed <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and when you are invited to some sort of events, they'll tell you it's after five dress or it's, you know, formal dress. That should be on the invitation if it's a big to do. Right. Girl, let me tell you, I took my daughter's friend with us to the theater. No, she didn't come in some booty shorts. Oh, I thought you were going to say jeans. That's that's worse. No, jean <laughs> booty shorts and flip flops no. to the theater. I was going to come about the ground. I said, oh, no, no, baby, we can't do this. I said, you need to call your mother. I wasn't leaving. You need to call your mother and have her to bring you something appropriate to wear. Well, Miss Mahoney, what do you mean appropriate? And I was, I had to dial back. I had to just See, take my breath. Some people don't know what appropriate is. They're so used to the shorts and the flip-flops and the t-shirts, and that's the only wardrobe they have. Mm. So and people need to be talking. I'm sorry. I said, and no one's ever taught them. Yes, people need to be taught this stuff. They, they just don't know. You don't know what you don't know. But you would, you would just assume that they've seen other people. I mean, uh, like the theater is my thing. The theater and the opera and concerts. Uh, I kind of look at how people dressed, but now things have changed. They will go in jeans and a sweatshirt, you know, uh, mm -hmm to hear a Mozart concert. It just doesn't fit me. And so they say, oh, you're trying to be bougie. You're trying to be snooty. Absolutely. <laughs> no, it's a standard. There are standards. And remember, some places you can't go if you don't have a tie on. Right. So we've lost our, our art of having a standard to dress and living. Let's talk about relationships between men and women. Mm. Mr. Magnificent, my husband of 36 years, Baby, he will stop whatever he's doing to open the door for me to this day. He's a okay, job. Where he always opens the door for me. He always tells me, baby, thank you for making my dinner or shows me that he appreciates in the smallest ways. It doesn't have to be with gifts or flowers. You mm -hmm. know, I love a little peck on the cheek. But what are some of the things that men should still instill when they are maybe courting a lady or taking her out? What are some of the things that a man should know? All right, first thing a man should know is 
don't expect sex from it. Uh, <laughs> right. Don't expect something. Smell uh, uh, <laughs> on that one, girl. <laughs> It's a, it's a give and take, all right? You, you need to be kind. They need to be kind. And it just it layers itself. So just holding hands or pulling the chair out, some people don't do that. Oh. Uh, kind words, like you said, flowers, opening the door. It doesn't mean that you're less than a, a lady to do that. Feminism has its place, but sometimes that's just a, just a I care. That just means I care. Right. And that's what I like too. Okay, so now a lady reciprocating. Women don't know how to flirt anymore, girl. They send in these sex texts with all they business. You know, you look at that, you say, what is this ugly thing? <laughs> <laughs> and that's supposed to be attractive. Or again, you know, they have uh, all of their business hanging out. There's, there's an art, ladies, to sexuality and sensuality. Yes. You know, it is an art. Uh, an art form to be graceful and to wear lingerie and to smell pretty and, you know, to be desired by a man. It's like an onion. You want to peel back the layers. Okay. And then when you peel back the layers, then the eyes start to water. Correct. (laughs) But but like my father said, I buy the cow if the milk is free. Wow. So if you're giving it all out, you know, your blouse is down to nipple level. Um, what else is there left Mm -hmm. so less is more and just adorn yourself with things to look at that are not so flesh revealing and not like I'm gonna say mummify yourself in clothing but less is more you don't have to show it all to get it all right you know there's some cultures that the back of the neck like Asian women men find the back of the neck and they they find that so erotic they're not mm-hmm. looking at all of this. You know, that's secondary. You know, it is the allure mm-hmm. and it's the desire. It's the imagination. That's what, well, that's what stimulates them. Mm-hmm. So now when you send your daughter to finishing school um, or charm school or mm-hmm. a course such as yours, what can they expect to learn? Well, they can expect, you know, the poise. That's one thing that's that is a lost art. How to position yourself, how to sit, how to stand. I myself, I'm a hand mover. It's an Italian sort of thing, people tell me. But um, how to present yourself as polished, how to speak, how to dine. We don't just eat these days, we dine. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me stop you right there, girl. We graze, okay? (laughs) Because I got, you know, again, I am quick to, to uh, uh, self-disclose. I have no problem telling people what I have done. I was at um, a restaurant with my girlfriend, mm-hmm. and she's very petite. And I guess I was just inhaling my food. <laughs> and she said, excuse me, could you slow down? You don't need to inhale your food. We're here for an hour. I was so embarrassed. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't know if I had stuff on the side of my face. Then I went to another one of my uh, dear friends and it was a, um, what did she call it? It was, it was mindful eating, mindful meditation, where you take the fork and you eat and you chew at least 20 to 25 times before you swallow. Your, your food is almost liquefied. Mm-hmm. So there, again, we don't eat, we graze. We just get out there and just mow it down and stuff it in but that also messes with your digestion. So I'm sorry to interrupt there, but Brains, I had to self-disclose. Slow down when you eat because people are looking at you and it's embarrassing. <laughs> it's embarrassing. See, what, what, well, like with the restaurant and your first friend, it, she's there for the experience. Uh, did you know that in, in France, children's lunch times are an hour and a half? Really? Yeah, so they can eat and they can converse and they can relax and enjoy the moment before they go back to class. And, and here, Italy, and in Italy, they it's customary to go for a walk after huh. and get some gelato, you know. But here, it's thirty minutes. You better eat. You better move. Damn, there's no time to think about it. So that's another reason why we're constantly eating so quickly is because we don't have time and we don't take the time. Mm. And it's bad on your <laughs> digestive system. It leaves Absolutely. you bloated. It leaves you uncomfortable you know, or you get sleepy because, you know, all of these things. So that definitely impacts you. 
Yes. Okay, so I'm sorry. Finish telling me. I get so excited about this because <laughs> again, you know, I have to check myself. This is the perfect opportunity. <laughs> Where were we? I forgot. It was so we, were, we were talking about in restaurants and oh, yeah. you know, how we don't, you know, eating at the mm. restaurant and not having good table manners. Oh. Oh, oh, of the using the napkin and holding the silverware, that's a huge thing. You know, the American style versus continental style. Uh, people just don't think about that. But seriously, if you go on a job interview, invite you to lunch or to dinner, mm-hmm. they're watching you. Mm-hmm. They are watching you. Mm-hmm. My, so cousin, we- my cousin is so cold blooded, girl. He oh, no. and he loves corn on the cob. Oh, no. Now, he's, so, <laughs> well, he's so bougie that he cuts the corn off the cob you don't see him doing all of this oh you wouldn't dare he cuts the corn off the cob and again the proper placement for a fork you do not stab your meat and cut in between you place your fork and slice is that correct you slice one to two pieces at a time that's it oh and you don't need to saw either you it's it's a firm pull back and if you have to saw then the meat you know it is an issue with that (laughs) <laughs> it, it you know it is and um talking with your mouth full I, yes that's a horrible thing it's a it should be a crime seriously it's so classless it is you spitting and laughing and joking and all that all this is coming out parents or you know or you're missing teeth and you see all the food in between the teeth and all that kind of stuff it's not good horrific it's yeah. not good so uh drinking tea there's a there's an art to drinking tea please show us how to drink some tea this is not involved this is straight um pretentious this means you're a snob you just your little two fingers your thumb and you always look into the cup when you sip Mm. don't look over that's called frog eyes (laughs) it's always into the cup cup. (laughs) okay all right perfect and um you know, uh, belching. That's a no, no. You need to learn how to silently do that. I know, but then it'll come out the other end. <laughs> well, the silence is the key. <laughs> wow. wow, that is crazy. You know, they have this this stuff now called poopery. Oh, poopery. <laughs> yeah, that you spray in the, and I take it with me wherever I go because you never know when you may have to use the restroom. Okay. That's true. That's that's just how it is. And you do not want to be offensive. So I always, you know, kind of spread in the bathroom. I always smells so fresh. It smells better when I leave than when I went in. I bet you have a big purse. <laughs> no, I don't. And let me tell you another thing about the purse. Another woman told me, I carry a little compact purse. Number one, the, the, the other purse is bad on the shoulders. But she said something very, very um, poignant to me. She said, you can always tell the character of a woman by the size of the baggage she carries. Hmm. Hmm. So I said, wow. So this big old, you know, I'm not going to call no designers names because they're not paying. <laughs> so, you know, whatever, but you know, you got these big old duffel bags. Yes. Full of stuff. And is, is that really necessary? And you're carrying a lot of baggage. You're carrying, uh, you know, your bills all the time. You might have your kids, you know, an extra diaper in there, your wallet, you know, everything but the kitchen sink and is all that necessary to be carried with you everywhere you go Mm, oh no it's different times in your life that you have different things but you know with the children you're going to have a little backpack with diapers and stuff but at my age I don't need to be wiping my 10 year olds back in so I have a small purse I use a small purse and I put all my necessities like you say less is more Mm -hmm. less is more so as you teach these young uh, adults and kids these things, what is their response? Are they receptive to this or are they thinking, oh, this is old school. They, you know, they don't do that no more. You know, funny enough, children are, are super honest. <laughs> and yeah, they're, so brutally. They, they confess a lot of things to me. Um, but, you know, when I was talking with one school group about, you know, your posture and telling the young ladies, make sure you have on good, your undergear your uh your bras and things and one one child was like you know my mom had a a plastic surgery to to perk up her (laughs) 
sweetheart. I am so happy for her. But those are things you discuss at home and not outside of the house. Right. right. Um, oh gosh, I got lost somewhere. But uh, <laughs> oh, oh no, we were we were talking about um, you know the 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 proper way to conduct themselves. These young people, as you're teaching them. Oh you yeah, know, a, a lot of them don't know this. They don't know, especially with the tea cup. We always, when I do the children's classes, we always have a tea party and, and they are so afraid of, and I use real dishes. These are real straight out of England. Um, and they're afraid because they don't get to do this stuff at home. Right. And, and, and I tell them, if you don't use it, if you don't use it, no one ever will. It'll sit in the cabinet and when somebody passes away, it'll get you know, sent to goodwill. Right. So practice with the good stuff. And they get, they are so excited, the tea party, dinner. And when we do like camp, I have them make the salad. I have them make the meal. Wow. And so they appreciate it more. Right. And a couple of times I've had children, one who had never had olives before. Her mom didn't like salad. She didn't have fresh tomato, mm -hmm. nothing. And so I'm learning, they're learning, and they're really enjoying the experience because it's hands-on. And that's what the children and even with the adults. And I'm very into that. I have nothing in my house that is not used. I don't care if it's fine china, if I feel like having a glass of wine, if I feel like having some Kool-Aid, I will I put it in a pretty glass because it makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. These things are not more important than the pleasure that it brings to me. Mm. And so that is a part of the experience. My daughter, she... <laughs> We went to somebody's house and when we left, she goes, mom, she said, they have paper plates. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, we don't eat on paper plates. I said, no, we don't. Then another time we were traveling and she says, are we staying at a hotel or a motel? I said, you don't know the difference. She said, oh yes, I do. She said, the hotel will bring my, uh, will give, bring me room service and take my luggage up. And they're nice to me. There's a little man out there with a hat. She said at a motel, she said, you just pull up and do everything for yourself. My children are like that. Yep. <laughs> and you, you can call it bougie or whatever you want. But again, she knows what it is. Yeah. It is. You get used to standards. It's all about standards. That's right. And you have to raise your standards. That's right. And it's, you know, and it's a level of expectation. Mm -hmm. I remember sending her to a bat mitzvah. And I gave her a little cultural etiquette. I said, now the food is going to be way different. They're not having barbecue ribs, potato <laughs> salad, okay? I said, but, and you may not particularly care for it. I said, but I want you to get a little bit and sample it because there could be things that you really like. I said, I want you to have your best manners. You be very respectful. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Place your napkin. I gave her the whole thing. When I went to pick her up, the little child's mother, said that she was the best and most well-behaved. And again, she was the only piece of pepper in the salt shaker, okay? <laughs> that means black child air brains for y'all that don't get it, okay? So she was the most uh, well-behaved child there. And that it comes from rearing. It comes from rearing and standards. And see, I'm glad you told her about the different foods. I mean, that's one thing that, that people don't do. They don't try anything outside of their culture. Mm -mm. And, and it's so hard to appreciate other things if all you have are Big Macs and a hamburger helper. Right. So like with my, one of my daughters, we were talking the other day, she says, oh, mom, we haven't had any curry in a couple of weeks, you know, and mm -hmm. we, we do all different versions of Asian. People think Chinese restaurant is it. Oh no, you got Thai and Vietnamese and Korean. You've got to expand your borders of your mind and your life. But with that, that reduces prejudice and ignorance. Right. And ignorance means just not knowing. Mm -hmm. you know, it makes you more well-versed. It makes you more welcomed. You know, my mother loves when she goes somewhere with me. She says, baby, you can hold a conversation with anybody. anybody. She said, you can just talk. I said, why do I talk too much? She says, no. She says, but you know a little bit about everything. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, it's thank you, mother. You know, and that comes from, again, my parents exposing me and what they didn't know they would expose me they would take me to the museum and I've learned about art and culture and the ballet and again how to dress appropriately how to act like a lady because see my my father he didn't play that 
<laughs> play, there, there was none of that. All you know, looking outside and all we kissing all on each other and and all that fondling, all that. You get your back broke, okay? <laughs> time and a place. You better be discreet. You better be a lady. You better watch your voice tone. You know, mm -hmm. all this loud talking. Let's talk about language. Oh. I'm going to okay. self-disclose one more time. Well, I invited a few girlfriends over and we got a little liquored up and we were saying some inappropriate things. And my mother, who is 91, was listening in the bedroom. And she called me in the room after my guest left and she said, I thought you were having some ladies over for a dip in the jacuzzi and some mimosas and a nice lunch. And I said, I was. She says, those was no ladies. She says, those were some ghetto hoochie uh, hood rats. She said, the stuff that came out of their mouth was absolutely atrocious. She said, and I heard a few choice words coming out of your mouth too. I was so embarrassed. So foul language, I mean, you know, there is over 4 million, and I did a, a podcast on this. I'm going to share with y'all brains. There's over 4 million, 5 million, 6 million words that you could use, but people choose to use the nastiest 20 words repeatedly over and over and over to the point where it's, you know, it's an epidemic and it's contagious and it's so vulgar when you sit there, just sit there for a minute brains and listen to somebody have a conversation uh, or these rappers. Oh, there's one particular radio show. Every other word, it's a woman too. Is MF, MF, MF. I got to turn it off. There's no respect. No respect. No, res no self-respect. Mm -hmm. And the filth riding on your tongue. It's just as nasty. And do you think that that gives you power or does that give you force or influence? No, people just turn you down and say that you're ignorant, that you, you know, again, you don't Literally. know nothing. Yeah, it makes you look this big. You might look big in the eyes of somebody else, but to other people, this is what you look like. And, you know, you're going to carry this with you in business. You're going to carry this with you uh, in school. This is how you're talking to your kids. What would you say to a person that's trying to break that ugly habit of swearing all the time? Oh, it's, <laughs> well, I'm working with a client now and they have this habit. They, they do. And so I'm telling you, I, I'm telling her to uh, look at the reactions of people and that'll tell you if you've said something inappropriate. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely expand. This, like you said, so many more words in the English language. I'd rather be known as eloquent versus ignorant. I know. And again, as a culture, you know, uh, we are already looked at and framed in a certain kind of way. And what used to get me is when people would say, oh, and Barack uh, Obama, he's so well-read. He uh, he's, uh, speaks so eloquently. Well, everybody can speak eloquently if you slow down, if you listen, reduce those filler words of, mm, ah, you know. Like. Like. Girl, I got to ring the bell. <laughs> like. That like drives me crazy, young people. Like what, baby? What are you What are you trying to say to me? What is it like? Is it like <laughs> soup? Is it like a rock? Is it like a flower? You know, what is it like? Every like, 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 but it becomes habit forming. Yes. And so we used to do a thing in Toastmasters where we had a little clapper. And every time you would say, mm, ah, you know, what, whatever, whatever, we would, the clapper. And I have watched... Uh, great orators on television. And I have had the nerve to sit there and count even Barack Obama, the ums and the filler words. And it's so annoying. You do not get your thought all the way out. So slow down and think about what you're going to say before it comes out of your mouth. It's not, you know, you don't have to be rushed, but you want to be clear and you want to be concise and you want to be polite and you want to be respectful and you want to use a variety of different words. You want good flavors on your tongue. Would you agree, Miss Misty? Absolutely. And one more thing with all that bad language, with all that cursing, is that something you want to say in front of your pastor and your mother? Mm. Think about it. Before you say I it, think it. You kiss your mother with that mouth? 
<laughs> dirty, it's dirty, dirty. It's really embarrassing. Let's talk about chewing gum. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I hitting on all of the points? <laughs> I have one gum chewer, but she knows not to, you know? Why, you know, uh, my husband bought me a pack of gum, some Wrigley's Double Mint Gum. I don't remember the last time I really did. You know, I use a mint, you know, mm -hmm. because bad breath is a no-no brain. Yes. Okay. You are conscious of it. If your teeth are bleeding or whatever, do this and you get the sniff test and you don't pass, put a mint in your mouth because it's offensive to other people. And, or there's people that, uh, you know, uh, will say, oh, well, I'm not going to be up in their face. What about the smell? <laughs> yeah. You think about that. Okay, so the chewing and the popping of the gum. You know, I heard that uh, Oprah Winfrey does not allow you to have gum in her studio or anything. Mm. You know, I think what I read was her grandmother used to take gum, put it on the bottom of a uh, paper and mm -hmm. line the shelves with it. <laughs> and so that's one reason why she hates gum but the popping and the cracking and all of this chewing and all that you'll be in an interview because again if my guests are on the edge uh you have to remove the gum mm -hmm. it looked like you chewing uh hay or something <laughs> yes it is a cow like feature it, <laughs> you're saying it's a cow like feature you're funny uh <laughs> it, it's just i don't know i don't know and Let's end with wardrobe. You know, um, it's hard to manage weight now, especially with COVID. Mm -hmm. But if it don't fit, don't wear it. Get rid of it. Don't you wear it. Don't wear it. If you've got, uh, you know, excessive meat anywhere that's not attractive, it's okay to cover it up. You don't have to be ashamed accentuate the parts of your body that are sexy. You know, again, the neck, the deglete, the arms, the knees, the wrist. There is a lot of uh, things that are beautiful and also your fragrance. Now, I don't oh, yeah. smell good, but uh, I don't need to overly do it. One spray, two sprays, because you're really doing this for the other person. It's not so much for yourself, but people come in there, girl, and they just, Got it. Ooh. If you lit a match, <laughs> they would. So what do you think about those things? You know, about putting your attire together and your smell. Hmm. Well, one thing is we have all of this cheap mass produced clothing on the market. So everybody's wearing a t-shirt of a well, no, sorry, a tight fitting t-shirt in some cases or baggy t-shirt. T-shirts are a whole nother world. And so I don't, I don't particularly, I don't wear t-shirts, all right? Unless I'm working out at home. You won't see me outside of my house. But um, it's just a wardrobe. You, you really want things to fit. You really want things to, to look good on you. And it's, there comes a point when, like you said, we might have gained a few pounds. Just order a new shirt and order a good quality piece that you can use for years to come. This beautiful blouse, I picked it up at Goodwill. For five dollars. Wow. I have worn it for three years. It is a, and it's a little bit loose, but it is a good quality. So look for that quality because it lasts. Whereas you would have four or five shirts through and you have one or two blouses that are good standard. Look for classic styles. Make it happen. You had a second question. I missed that. Um, I forgot, but you know, I want to get onto this to these baggy pants and oh. these young men with these sagging. Let me tell you something, young man and grown man, that's the last thing I need to see is your underwear. And I don't even know how you can move. Some of them are below so the genitalia and they run in and they hold in their pants and they crouch at the same time. I hope a dog don't come after you. <laughs> and from what I understand, that was established in the jails okay. to show your availability for sexual intercourse. So there's nothing cute about that. And if you're not in jail, it shouldn't be worn. Right. Just don't. Bring yourself up. Whether, whether you're in jail or not in jail, pull your pants up, tuck your shirt in, and wear a belt. 
Okay, I don't know where they got this from, but it is just so disrespectful to see someone uh, and looking at their underwear. And sometimes I've seen them and it don't look that like their underwear is all that clean either. <laughs> It's a, it's a it's disgrace. Horrible. It really is. It's a disgrace. It is a disgrace. And then people wonder why we're labeled and they wonder why we're disrespected. And we're wondering why we're targeted by the police because we're putting a bullseye on our back saying, hey, I'm not a part of mainstream. I got my own lane. Okay. And I'm mm-hmm. going to drive down this lane and I'm going to do whatever I want. Well, when you on a deserted uh, highway, you get whatever you're going to get. It's as simple as that. Hmm. Yeah, so raise your standards. Raise your standards. So leave us with uh, some things maybe that I didn't cover because we have been talking forever. I've had the best time uh, with you again because, again, this is a lost art. And especially around this time of year, people really kind of need any time of year. They need to really kind of step up their game because y'all, some of y'all are looking sloppy <laughs> and you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to. And see, you never know if your manners can take you further. If you don't use them, you know, just being polite to people can get you places. It can make you friends that you never knew you had. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, they, you. they mm-hmm. desire, they desire you. You know, when someone sees a person that has class and charm and style, they want to emulate you. They want to do what you're doing. They want to know how you got that success. You know, people will ask me all the time, you know, how did you do that? Or how did you get there? Again, sitting, being quiet, being classy, you know, raising the standard. Absolutely. And that's what people want. Tell my brains what your offering is and how to get in contact with you. <laughs> All right. You can find me on MissHarrisAndCo.com. I'm offering you a five-day, what do I call it? My charm school checkup. It's an email list. Uh, you'll get five emails, five days. We will talk about how you stand how you eat or dine, you know, how you dress. We want to see, I want you to see and test yourself to see if you need to raise your standards. So it's five days, it's free. And from there, you're on my mailing list and you can come to me if you have questions. And I offer other classes. I offer ladies classes, dining classes, children's classes. I am here for all of your etiquette needs. You are just the absolute best. You are. And I have enjoyed this so much. I really have. Thank you so much, Brains. I need you to go and subscribe to everything. Upgrade your level of etiquette with Miss Misty Harris. Uh, Teach your kids how to act appropriately and be respectful and watch your potty mouth. And be sure that you always Put on a smile, because if you don't, you're not fully dressed. Thanks, Misty.